Hi, this is Evi Vemu and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 81 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating the importance of the septal branches during percutaneous coronary intervention. The patient presented with non-ST elevation acute myocardial infarction and was found to have a three-vessel coronary artery disease with significant lesions in the middle AD, as well as the mid-circumflex and the proximal circumflex. There was also an occlusion of the right coronary artery. And because of the significant three-vessel disease, the patient was referred for coronary bypass craft surgery, but was declined because of frailty. As a result, there was referral for percutaneous coronary intervention. These are the baseline hemodynamics and EKG without significant changes and with a good systolic blood pressure. The case was done using radial access and six French guide catheters. The first uh, vessel was the LAD and um, after placement of a 275 by 45 millimeter drug eluting stand, a nice result was obtained with Timothy flow down the LAD. However, there was loss of a septal branch that was originating immediately proximal to the diagonal. And this is uh, better illustrating, showing both um, images at the same time. This is the image uh, before, showing that there is a septal branch that originates within the lesion. The septal is originating immediately proximal to the takeoff of this diagonal branch. And in the picture taken after the stand, here is the diagonal branch, and we see that the septal is missing. And this is confirmed when we look at the iliocranial view, where here is the diagonal branch, but there is no septal coming more proximally. Given that the septals are usually not uh, large branches and do not cause significant consequences, if occluded, we decided to proceed with uh, PCI of the circumflex and place stents in the mid-circumflex as well as the proximal circumflex with a nice result. However, in the interim, the patient developed chest discomfort and ST segment changes on the EKG as well as significant nausea. She did have a transient by Gemini. We see their ST segment depressions on the EKG and after the bigemin resolved, there remained ST segment depressions on the EKG. As a result, we decided to treat that septal branch. We used a filter FC guide wire. We looped it through the previously placed stand and then brought it back. And uh, using as landmark the diagonal branch, we were actually able to wire into the septal without too much difficulty. We then dilated with a 1.5 millimeter balloon and then used a 2.0 millimeter balloon. There was good flow, but not perfect, so we rewired and then we used a 2.0 millimeter balloon. And then to avoid deformation of the main vessel stand, we did the proximal optimization more proximally with a 3.0 millimeter balloon. Unfortunately, the proximal optimization resulted in reocclusion of the septal branch. And as a result, we rewired, performed one additional inflation with a 2.0 millimeter balloon. And that resulted in resolution of the EKG changes and also restoration of flow into the uh, septal branch. So in summary, this case illustrates that all those septals, and the same applies for acute marginals, are typically not uh, being uh, preserved. They're not considered large enough branches to be of significant consequences. Several cases, including the case we present here, shows that those branches can be important and can cause uh, chest discomfort and ST segment uh, depression. If uh, occlusion of such branches occurs, then rewiring can be challenging, and it is important to use other vessels as landmarks to identify the origin of the occluded vessel and then recanalize it. And also we show that if we recanalize it, we're able to relieve those changes and improve the patient's symptoms. Thank you.